now we are ready to uh, define a vector space or a linear space uh, which is the basic object of this topic linear algebra. So, we will say this vector spaces. So, this is also starts with a non empty set with uh, some operations. A non empty set V together with operations called addition and scalar multiplication scalar multiplication is a vector space over a field f if the following axioms hold. First one is this, this V with respect to this addition operation is a commutative group. Second property is that V is closed under scalar multiplication that is for any element u in V and alpha belongs to f this alpha dot u belongs to V. Third property is this for alpha beta in F and u belongs to V alpha plus beta dot u is equal to alpha dot u plus beta dot u. Fourth property is for alpha belongs to f and elements u and w in v alpha dot u plus w is equal to alpha dot u plus alpha dot w. Fifth property is that for alpha beta in F and u in V alpha dot beta dot V sorry beta dot u is equal to alpha dot beta u. And this sixth axiom is this 1 dot u is equal to u for every element u in V and 1 is the multiplicative identity of f, multiplicative identity of this field. So, if a non empty set together with two operations called addition and scalar multiplication that is called a vector space over a field f if these axioms hold. 
here whenever this b together with addition and scalar multiplication is a vector space so if this is a vector space over a field f then elements of b are called elements of b are called vectors and elements of f are called elements of f are called scalars so we will have also linear combination of vectors that for vectors v1 v2 vn in v and alpha 1 alpha 2 to alpha n in f the expression alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 plus alpha n v n is called a linear of course, this is also may be said as finite linear combination of v 1 v 2 to v n. Notice that if v is a vector space over f then v contains all finite linear combinations all finite linear combinations of elements in V that is why V is called a linear space that is why V is also called a linear space. Uh, next we will have some example of vector spaces. So, the first example that is a very natural one is that set of complex number C is a vector space over the real field R but the converse is not true, but the converse is not true that is R is not a vector space over C. because R will not be closed under scalar multiplication. So, the second example is basically that is called the n tuple space the n tuple space 
that is for any field f for any field f fn that is Cartesian product of f with itself n number of times that fn consists of all n tuples that x1, x2 up to xn such that each xi is an element of f is a, this is this f n is a vector space over f with respect to the operations that for any two elements that addition is defined like this x 1 x 2 to x n plus y 1 y 2 to y n is equal to x 1 plus y 1 x 2 plus y 2 like this x n plus y n coordinate wise addition and scalar multiplication is alpha times this x 1 x 2 x n that is equal to alpha x 1 alpha x 2 alpha x n for any alpha in f. So, here we can observe that this R n is also a vector space because, so as a particular case, as a particular case, as a particular case, R n is a vector space over R this R n is also called that n dimensional Euclidean space. Next we will have this example, third example that is space of matrices, space of matrices so that collection of some matrices also form vector space. So, here for any field f, let us denote that f m cross n be the collection of all m by n matrices over f. Then this f m cross n, this is a vector space over this field f with respect to matrix addition and scalar multiplication with respect to matrix addition and scalar multiplication. So, next we will have this fourth example is this space of polynomials, space of polynomials. So, let f be a field and p f be the collection of all polynomials over f 
that is P f is the set of all polynomials like a 0 plus a 1 x plus a n x to the power n such that each a i that comes from this field f i from greater than or equal to 0 less than or equal to n and this n is an integer that is greater than or equal to 0. So, this Uh, P f will be the collection of all these polynomials over this field f is a vector space over this field f with respect to addition of polynomials and scalar multiplication of polynomials with respect to addition of polynomials and scalar multiplication of polynomials that is if we are having two polynomials that a 0 plus a 1 x plus a n x to the power n plus another polynomial say b 0 b 1 x up to say b m x to the power m then their sum is the polynomial c 0 plus c 1 x up to this c k x to the power k where this c k is equal to where this c i is where c i is equal to a i plus b i for i greater than or equal to 0 less than or equal to k and k is equal to maximum of n and m and of course, this a i is equal to 0 for i greater than n and b i is equal to 0 for i greater than m and for any scalar alpha alpha into any polynomial that a 0 plus a 1 x plus a n x to the power n is equal to alpha a 0 plus alpha a 1 x like this alpha a n x to the power n. So, then uh, we can have some natural properties of a vector space uh, that we will write in a lemma and then of course, the proof of this lemma is not difficult to check and one can take this as an exercise. So, uh, these properties are very trivial, but uh, useful we use them again and again. So, if V is a vector space over a field F, then we will have the following results a is this alpha dot 0 is equal to 0 for alpha belongs to f 
and 0 is the additive identity of additive identity of V plus called the 0 vector. Second property we can have is this, this 0 dot any vector B that is equal to 0 for any vector B in the vector space and 0 in LHS is the scalar 0. and 0 in RHS is the vector 0. <coughs> Third property we can have is this minus alpha into V is equal to minus alpha V for any alpha in the field f and vector b in the vector space. Fourth property we can have is this, if v is not equal to non-zero vector not equal to 0 or a non-zero vector in v, then alpha dot u sorry alpha dot v is equal to 0 implies that alpha equal to 0. That means, for any non-zero vector b, if this alpha dot b v equal to 0, then alpha equal to 0 for any alpha in f. So, then next we will have this subspecies concept, whenever we are having some algebraic structure, we have its substructure. So, we will have this subspecies. So, let V be a vector space over a field F, then a subset, a subset W of V is called a subspace if W is closed under the same operations, same operations in V that is addition and scalar multiplications. scalar multiplications in V. In other words, in other words, for U V belongs to W and alpha belongs to F, U plus V belongs to W and this alpha U belongs to W plus and this dot plus and dot are the operations of V, operations of V. One can also combine these two and write in a 
single condition that combining the above two we can also have that W is a subspace of V if for U V belongs to W and alpha beta scalars alpha u plus beta v belongs to w. So, let us see some example of subspaces. Let us have some example of subspaces. So, so that trivial subspaces are if this 0 is the 0 vector of this is the 0 vector of V then this set consists of the 0 vector only is the this is a subspace. This is the subspace of V called trivial. Called trivial subspace. Similarly, Similarly, the vector space it V, the vector space V itself is a subspace. Subspace of V and is also called a trivial subspace. So, next we will have another example. Uh, let us consider this R 2. We will take this Euclidean plane R 2. Then this for any point a b in R 2, the line joining the origin 0 0 and this point a b is a subspace of R 2 that is this subspace can be written as set of all x y in R 2 such that A x plus B y is equal to 0. However, if we consider any other line that is not, pa not passing through the origin, however, this line that collection of all x y such that a x plus b y is equal to 1, this is not passing through origin is not a subspace of R 2. 
So, next we will have a uh, different kind of vector space and subspaces that is they are matrices. So, now you consider this set of all m by n ok let v be the space of this n tuples ok no we will consider sorry we will consider this b with this set of all m by n matrices over f then the collection of all uh, with this m by n matrices with m is equal to n. Then this set of all n by n symmetric matrices form a subspace of V. Then the collection of all n by n symmetric matrices symmetric matrices over f forms a subspace of this v. Similarly, we will have another example that fifth example that the set of all Hermitian matrices let again we will consider this vector space V B C n cross n or in other words uh, the collection of all n by n complex matrices. This is the collection of all n by n complex matrices. Then here the collection of all n by n Hermitian matrices. Hermitian matrices is not a subspace, not a subspace of V because the diagonal entries of these matrices are real and will not be closed under scalar multiplication, scalar multiplication if the scalar is purely a complex number, a complex number. So, these are some example of subspaces, then we will we'll define another important concept that is a linear span of a set linear span of a set of vectors. So, let us have a vector space let V be a vector space over a field F and 
S B A set of vectors in V. So, let us denote let L S be the collection of collection of all finite linear combination of finite linear combination of elements in S. Finite linear combination means linear combination of finite number of elements in S that is linear combination of linear combination of all possible finite subsets of S. Then this L S satisfies some properties that again we will write that as a lemma of course, this proof is easy and that has been left as an exercise, it is not difficult to check that first condition, first property is this L S is a subspace. L S is a subspace of V and second result that one can see is that in fact, not only this is subspace, this L S is the smallest subspace, smallest subspace of V containing containing S. L S is the sub smallest subspace of V containing S. In other words, that is whenever the W is that is if W is an arbitrary subspace of V containing S, then this L S will be contained in W. This is what we mean that this L S is the smallest subspace, it will be contained in a subspace if that subspace contains this set S. <coughs> so, let us have some examples. So, first example is that we can take this vector space S R 2 and this S is consist of only one element, one element or one vector of this vector space that is 2, 3. Then L S is actually the straight line passing through origin and 2, 3. Then L S is the straight line in R 2 passing through the origin 0 0 and 2 3 this point. Second, uh, second example is that again if we take this V is equal to R 2 and S is consist of the points 1 0 0 1. Then 
एल एस इज इक्वल टू दे होल स्पेस आर टू सो दिस लीनियर स्पैन ऑफ सेट्स विल बी यूजफुल एंड दिस एल एस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड दिस ऑफ स्पेस स्पैंड बाई एस एल एस इज कॉल्ड दे सब स्पेस स्पैंड बाई दे सेट ऑफ वेक्टर्स एस then we will discuss about linearly dependent and independent of vectors so that is very important concept in a linear algebra linearly dependent or independent of vectors so this is a very important concept in linear algebra so we give this definition so let v be a vector space over a field f and S B a subset of U. Subset of B. S is said to be linearly dependent. Said to be linearly dependent if there exist. there exist vectors v1 v2 to vn in s and scalars alpha 1 alpha 2 to alpha n not all zero of course alpha n not all zero this is very important such that this linear combination alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus alpha n vn is equal to 0 is 0 is the zero vector if s is not linearly dependent not linearly dependent then it is called a linearly independent set linearly independent set here we will have some uh results on this linearly dependent and independent sets they are trivial so we can write them as a remark sort of thing of course these are trivial a uh, trivially one can get using the definition of linearly dependent and independent of vectors so first one is uh, like this a superset a superset of a linearly dependent set of a linearly dependent set is linearly dependent and similarly we can have that a subset every subset of a 
linearly independent linearly independent set is linearly independent. And third observation one can have is this any set which contains the zero vector which contains the zero vector is a linearly dependent set linearly dependent set because alpha dot 0 equal to 0 for alpha not equal to 0 be a scalar. Then fourth remark we can have that here one can check this I mean linearly dependency of a finite number of vectors. Suppose a finite number of vectors are given and we want to check whether they are linearly dependent or independent. So, how should we do? What is the working formula for that? So, th this is all about the definition that we have given, but how to check? I mean what is the method for checking whether a given fine of course finite set of vectors are linearly dependent or independent. So, using this definition also one can check directly and we will also give another method for verification of linearly dependent and independent by uh, using some special type of matrices. So, here we consider that I mean a let that S be a set of vectors that V 1, V 2 to V n be a finite set of vectors in V. So, to check whether S is whether S is a linearly dependent or independent set independent set we do the following that is we consider a linear combination of vectors in S and equate to 0. Take this alpha 1 V 1 plus alpha 2 V 2 plus alpha n V n equal to 0, where alpha i's are scalars and will be determined. So, if we can uh, find the that if we find that all scalars are 0, scalars alpha i are 0, say this be equation 1 by solving equation 1, then
then the given set S will be linearly independent. Otherwise, it is linearly dependent. So, let us take one example and explain this concept that you take here V B R 3 and S 1 be this set of vectors 1, 2, 3, 1, 0, 2, 2, 1, 5 and S 2 be this set of vectors 2, 0, 6, 1, 2, minus 4, 3, 2, 2, B subset subsets of B. So, we will check linearly dependency or independency of S. So, for S 1 consider this alpha 1, 1, 2, 3, alpha 2, 1, 0, 2, plus alpha 3, 2, 1, 5, take this linear combination of vectors in S 1 and equate to 0. Then we will get equations like this, then we get equations alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus twice alpha 3 is equal to 0, twice alpha 1 plus alpha 3 is equal to 0, 3 alpha 1 plus twice alpha 2 plus 5 alpha 3 is equal to 0. On solving this system, on solving these equations, these equations we get alpha 1, alpha 2 are all and alpha 3 are all equal to 0. Therefore, this S 1 is a linearly independent set. However, for S 2, for S 2, we can take alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2 equal to 1 and alpha 3 equal to minus 1 and get that this alpha 1 times 2 0 6 plus alpha 2 times 1 2 minus 4 plus alpha 3 times 3 2 2 is equal to 0. So, S 2 is a linearly dependent set. This is a linearly dependent set. So, there is another way also to verify that whether the given set of vectors are linearly dependent or independent and for that we need a type of matrix that is called Eklund matrix. So, here we give this definition of an Eklund matrix. So, an M by N matrix a is said to be in Eklund for said to be in 
rho echelon form echelon form if it satisfies the following that first condition is this all the zero rows all the zero rows of a are at the bottom of a and second is this for all the non zero rows all the non zero rows of a as the row number increases the number of zeros at the beginning at the beginning of at the beginning of the rows also increases also increases so let us see one example here how to apply this echelon matrices and verify whether a given set of vectors are linearly dependent or independent so let us take b b the vector space r4 and s b the set of vectors that 1 to 1 minus 2 and this 2 1 3 minus 1 2 0 1 and s prime be the set of vectors 0 1 2 1 1 2 0 3 1 3 2 2 0 1 2 1 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 so let us verify whether they are linearly dependent or independent sets so for this uh set s this subset s of vectors we form a matrix by taking the vectors in s as rows so from s form matrix that 1 2 1 minus 2 taking the vector says rows of this matrix and that 2 0 1 4 4 so applying this elementary row operations or replacing r2 by r2 minus twice r1 we get this matrix that 1 2 1 minus 2 you this is unchanged and 0 minus 3 1 3 2 0 1 4 4 so again from this matrix we can have this elementary row operation r3 that we replace r3 by r3 minus twice r1 and get this matrix 1 2 1 2 0 3 1 3 0 2 1 8 2 0 1 2 1 3 and again by elementary row operations that r3 we replace by this 3 r3 minus twice r2 
and we get this matrix that 1 2 1 minus 2 0 minus 3 1 3 0 0 minus 5 18 the last matrix matrix is in echelon form here there is no non zero row there is no non zero row so s is a linearly independent set linearly independent set similarly one can get this echelon form of s prime uh, like this similarly we get an echelon echelon form for s prime as this 1 2 0 3 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 minus 2 0 0 0 where there is a 0 row so s prime is linearly dependent linearly dependent set. This is how we verify that whether a given set of vectors are linearly dependent or independent by using this echelon form of matrices that uh, given any set of fi finite set of vectors we form a matrix by taking the rows of the matrix as the vectors in that set and we convert to echelon form. If in the echelon form all the rows are non-zero then this set will be linear, linearly independent and if there is a zero row then this set of vectors will be linearly dependent set. Of course, we will uh, repeat this echelon form again uh, in our next lecture while uh, finding a uh, basis and dimension of vector spaces. Okay, that is all for this lecture. Thank you.